hey what's up guys um welcome to another youtube video and today um well i saw various videos about which programming language should you learn and i don't know i think i don't agree with some of the opinions out there from other people that were suggesting to learn x or y programming language so therefore i'm going to give my own opinion one thing though that i do agree is that you should not um be set on one single programming language i think that you should learn um various programming languages because there's so many things that you can do and some programming languages are well are are better thought of when it comes to do different things so without um um without digressing i'm gonna um, dive into the presentation and give my explanation so what programming language should you learn? And just to give you a straight response, uh, I personally think that people should go straight into Java or C Sharp. And my reasons for this is that I think that is very important to learn object oriented programming and that you learn how to uh, program strong typed um, programming languages. Why do I think this is important? Because I think that when you start lear learning this and you um, get this into your head that uh, you need to know what a string, what an integer is, what a double is, an array of integers, an array of um, characters, and various uh, different uh, data types, data structures, um, types of uh, how, how do you create a class, how do you inherit classes, how you have interfaces, I think that is very important, which some programming languages may not um, offer, at least at face, you know, at the beginning, when you start learning them. Uh, for example, Java, JavaScript and Python, they both have, well, JavaScript has object oriented programming, but it doesn't really, because you can program um, tons of projects without actually doing object oriented programming. It's not truly considered and not to object oriented programming language. Python, uh, in the other hand, you can leverage it to do object oriented programming. But again, in reality, it's not truly as, um, like when you start learning Python, you don't really start learning object oriented programming, but Python in comparison with JavaScript is actually really powerful and you can do uh, very powerful powerful things with object oriented programming and, and Python. Uh, not to mention that obviously Python um, is very important if you want to learn um, machine learning, artificial intelligence and neural networks. And well, everybody knows that Python is a very, um, well, it, it's a programming language that leverages uh, all those libraries to do data science in specific. Therefore, my my other language that I would uh, recommend um, below this too would be Python and JavaScript. Uh, JavaScript, I, I don't recommend it because I feel that at the end of the day, if you're going to do web development, you're going to have to learn it either way. Therefore, um, um, you know, sooner or later, you're going to have to learn it uh, if, if you start doing web development and by web development, I mean uh, full stack backend. I mean, if you do front end, there's nothing you can do, you, you'll have to. Therefore, I don't recommend it. And also I think that even though it's very easy to pick up, uh, pick up that language, you may end up with some bad habits or not bad habits, but a lot of like uh, empty gaps. Therefore, I strongly suggest to learn Java and C Sharp. So people may ask themselves, what can you do with Java and C Sharp? Because I asked this question myself too a lot and I didn't know whether I should like go into Java or not. I was very scared to like learn another language before knowing well uh, JavaScript. So in Java, uh, first of all, Java is a language that has been used over 20 years plus, maybe, uh, well, I don't know. I don't know how long, but a really long time. Um, actually, I'm just gonna Google that. So I'm not saying uh, nonsense. When was Java created? Okay, 1996. So yeah, I guess 20 plus years. Yeah, so that was not incorrect. 
So yeah, it's been used for a long, long time. And yeah, truth be told, it has been improving year after year, but um, Java has been very solid when it comes to backend applications and specifically um, corporate web applications. Um, banks uh, use a lot of, of Java backend, specifically the Spring framework. So that's one thing that you can you can start doing. You can start uh, doing backend with Java and use like Angular or React on the front end. Same with C Sharp. C Sharp, uh, these two are actually very, very similar. Even the, the programming languages are very, very similar, if not almost identical, except for a few intricacies. Uh, like in C Sharp, you, you can actually start using async uh, methods where in Java, um, I believe it's multi-threading, what it's called. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. But yeah, uh, if you've used JavaScript, I'm pretty sure you've seen async await. Well, you can also use that with C Sharp, which is basically you tell your code, um, try to do this task, but don't don't stop. Um, keep keep the the other tasks going, and this one running on the background. Once it's once you completed that task, just give me back the result, and keep going with your day. Whereas uh, multi-threading, what I understand is that you're telling do this now ASAP and on the background, I'm going to keep on doing, I mean, not in the background. And at the same time, uh, I'm going to do other tasks too, but you give me that as soon as possible. And I'm not going to, I'm waiting for you to give me this task. So there's a couple of reasons why uh, async await exists, but I'm not going to uh, dive into, the, uh, into that in this video. But yeah, um, so yeah, C Sharp, very similar to Java, is very good for enterprise applications, web applications. Uh, as you know, C Sharp was created by Microsoft, which is kind of like the response to uh, what Java and the Java committee were like, the, you know, there, there was a group that gathered and created Java. Well, C Sharp was the response of Microsoft saying, well, Java has these defects and we want to create uh, like a new Java R way. And that's, C sharp and because C sharp comes with Microsoft. Well, it's, it, it was proprietary software before now it's cross platform and it's becoming more and more cross platform, which I'm very happy because I'm a Mac user at the time, even though I use windows at work, but still, uh, personally I use Mac. So yeah, I'm, I'm happy that I can use C sharp cause it's actually a really good programming language and net core is a really good framework. So, so yeah, um, it's really good for enterprise applications. Um, if you learn one of these two, you, you're almost guaranteed to always have a job. So that is my, those are my arguments on why you should dive into this too. After, after you learn, this, learn these two programming languages, if you want to jump into C or C++, it's going to be very similar. So the jump is not going to be that hard. And the only thing that you need to start learning is, um, uh, memory allocation and memory manipulation, which once you get it, it, it's truly, it's virtually easy. So it's not that hard. Now, if you learn JavaScript and then you jump to C or C++, that's really, really hard. And I would not advise it. Therefore, I think this is, these two are really good transition languages. You can go up the level or down the level and, uh, with ease, in my opinion, I think that you have a better grasp in every single language that you start learning. Therefore, uh, yeah, I would advise, advise to learn this too. Not to mention, you can do Android applications in Java. Yes, there's Kotlin. Uh, I would still advise for people to learn first Java and Android programming because once you learn Java, you can do a lot of stuff with Java and Kotlin is very similar to Java, you can jump into Kotlin like within weeks after learning uh, Android programming with Java. So yeah, I would still uh, advise to learn Java if you choose this programming language. If you choose C Sharp, well, there's the Unity and Unity is game development. You can do, you can do game development, which uh, you cannot do in Java. So just know that you can do um, backend development backend development and video game uh, programming with C Sharp and with Java you do mobile development and 
uh, backend and web development basically now since they're so similar if you learn one pretty much what you learn in one is transferable into the other so what you learn in java it's very easy to transition into c sharp they're almost the same so yeah just pick any of them too and after three months or four months just go into the other don't get too stuck into no i should learn one one language for a year now i'll learn it for three or four months and then just learn another one um so yeah this is my other point um the worst advice that i've been given is don't jump into other languages because i was very scared scared uh throughout my <laughs> very short uh so far programming career i've been programming for like two or three years maybe and even people that are starting think that that's a lot uh, it's not there's people that have been programming for uh, five or ten or even 15 plus years so yeah i'm just virtually starting and i'm not in a rush i really do this because I like it and it's a hobby for me. So as a tip, um, don't learn, don't only learn one language, learn multiple languages. Once you have a good understanding of one, uh, you can jump into another one. Uh, do a project with a programming language that you're learning at the moment, because if you learn it and you don't apply it, it's not going to be useful for you to learn the language anyway. So yeah, try to try to build projects. Try to put a purpose in why, you're, why you are learning that programming language. The only programming language that I do think that it's good to learn, even though you may not be able to put it into a project right away, is C programming. Why do I think that C programming is good to learn just as theory? One, because, um, and by the way, I wouldn't advise this to be your first language. I would first learn Java or C Sharp before jumping into C. But right after you learn one of those two and you want to jump into C or C++, uh, by all means. But yeah, uh, C and C Sharp, uh, what you can do with those programming languages are very complex uh, projects. Could be very fun. But yeah, in, in reality, they're very complex because they're very low level languages. And what I mean by low level is that you can manipulate memory and you can manipulate like uh, the lower levels of the computer that other languages can't. Therefore, those two languages, like they're mainly used for more complicated uh, projects. Therefore, if you start learning programming, you may not find many things to do with those uh, with C or C++. But um, by the other hand, if you learn C, you, you learn how to program really well. And um, I think there's, there's a program in, there's a program, there's a course out there um, in Udemy, which I really recommend. And this, again, I would advise for you to take it right after you learn really, really well Java uh, or C Sharp. And this course is algorithms in C. This course right here, this guy is really, really good, uh, Abdul Bari. So he goes very well in depth in every single uh, topic about data structures and algorithms. And he teaches this in C and C sharp. Now there's a lot of things that if you, ha if you haven't uh, learned about uh, data structures and algorithms, they may be hard and they may be even harder if you have not programmed before. Therefore, I would leave this as like a second or even third language to learn. Um, so I don't know, cause, cause I learned Java in Udemy and I learned Java with, uh, with this instructor, Tim Buchaka, which I think he's really good. So if you ask me, I would advise you guys to also go with, to this course and learn. Now you don't have to take this course, obviously, but what I would do is check what they teach. And from that, um, I would tell you that it would be good for you to learn from first steps all the way to abstract classes and interfaces. I'm trying to see how many lectures. Uh, 
So yeah, so by 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 this time you've already taken 132 lectures. So yeah, I would advise that at least get all the way to here. Know what interfaces are, what are abstract classes, what is inheritance, what's encaps encapsulation, polymorphism. Um, well, there's some technicalities that sometimes I even forget, uh, but all of this is very, very important. Um, Java generics, yeah, that's important. Um, conventions and packages, static and final, which final basically means when you declare a variable in Java or, or C or C sharp, final means that that variable won't change. Kind of like when you do const in JavaScript, I guess. Um, but yeah, and probably concurrency if you have time, but definitely like this is what you want to learn uh, in Java or even C sharp. In C sharp, you want to get all the way to inheritance, uh, interfaces, polymorphism and whatnot. So yeah, uh, that's what I would advise for you guys to um, to learn when you start learning. So, uh, okay, I already spoke about what products you can do with Java and C Sharp. Um, what else? So, um, I'm gonna tell you guys what languages I've learned. So I've learned JavaScript and Python. These were the two f uh, languages I learned first. Um, I had a really hard time learning JavaScript and Python because I had a lot of um, gap gaps of knowledge or knowledge gaps how you said um i had a really hard time because i didn't learn well the basics so one thing is that whatever you learn learn the basics really well because whenever you try to move on and you try to go into frameworks like in javascript or python uh you know using django or pygame you really don't understand what you're doing me personally, I think that learning Java um, really forces you to understand really, really well what you're doing and what what things mean when you program them. That's why I advocate for Java. But yeah, Java was my second language that I really dived into because um, I started learning Java and I also started programming uh, on Android. And I started doing like Android clones, uh, Tinder clones, I started doing um, podcast applications. I started doing all types of applications that you can think of in Java. So yeah, Java, you can see it's like my third language that I really dived into. Um, another language that I also learned was Swift because I wanted to be able to program both Android and iOS. That's why I learned both Java and Swift. But in Swift, I really, I learned enough to be able to to program like a very crappy <laughs> Instagram clone. So yeah, I never dived into Swift per se, but once I learned Java, it was very easy for me to to uh, learn Swift. Yes, there's some intricacies, but it's not that hard once you learn uh, Java and Android programming. Uh, C Sharp, I started doing a full stack web map, web app in C Sharp, um, actually .NET and Angular. Um, I never got to deploy it because it was just like a learning project for me. So yeah, I'm, I wouldn't say that I know really well C Sharp, but since I know Java pretty well, in my opinion, I think that if I want to learn C Sharp more, it wouldn't be a problem. Kotlin, uh, again, Kotlin, I started doing a lot of projects with Kotlin. Uh, what I did with Java, basically, I started doing with Kotlin. And since Java is a little bit more verbose, jumping from Java to Kotlin when it comes to Android programming, it's the transition is very smooth. So yeah, that's why I still advise people learn Java before Kotlin. C, um, till the day, I wouldn't say that I know C really well. Um, I think people still should learn C at some point because it's really good to know memory management. But um, I have a class at school called um, Object, uh, Object, Jesus, Operating Systems, Operating Systems Development. And we were uh, taught 
how to um, develop and design, well, design because it was really almost all implemented by the teacher and we were just told to like try to put like two and two together. But yeah, uh, we basically created a kernel using C. So yeah, I had to learn C pointers, what a monitor is, what a semaphore is. Um, what else? Right now I'm using C for network. So uh, we're being taught how to make a client server that is sending data in packets with TCP and UDP. And we're also gonna be taught how to uh, program the server. How are we going to be communicating uh, from the client to the server and whatnot? Uh, checking the data, checking bytes, what whatnot. Uh, so yeah, uh, we have to learn C really well, and I'm pushing myself to learn C for uh, school purposes. But in reality, I don't have a project in mind for C yet. Flutter. Um, my reason for Flutter is that I've always had trouble with Java and Swift using my APIs because uh, I went to a bootcamp and I'm currently a CS student. So I've done a lot of websites with uh, the MERN and the mean stack, and I currently have plenty of websites deployed. So one of my end goals, my long-term end goals, ha like one of them has been to have the uh, web app and then have the mobile app and be able to communicate uh, between them. So if I, ha if I have an API deployed um, in the cloud, I want to be able to push and update and delete data from my phone and be able to see those um, those actions reflected on the web app. Kind of like Facebook. If you use fa Facebook on your mobile, whatever you do on your mobile, you're obviously going to be able to see it on the web app. That's the exact same thing that I want to do. And since I always had trouble doing it with both Java and Swift, um, I think I, I said, you know what, it, it's getting too complicated. I don't care doing two code bases, but the actual fact of me having to to um, pull in an API and use it, for me, it was a headache. I don't care about actually programming two different code bases, but the fact that using API um, framework, uh, frameworks, API libraries uh, within both uh, frameworks, both Android and and so it was a pain for me. So I said, you know what? I know React, I'm gonna go into React Native. I try to use React Native and it's also a pain. Um, I actually worked for a little bit uh, freelancing doing Ionic. Ionic is very easy to develop locally, but once you want to deploy, things break. So it's also a pain. So I said like, you know what? Uh, I'm just gonna keep doing Native until I saw Flutter. And Flutter, uh, to my surprise, is relatively easy to, to program anything. Uh, I started programming like the UI uh, projects, but when it comes to um, importing your API, well, not importing, but making use of your API, it's actually really, really easy and it's super performant. So I started using Flutter and I really want to get better at Flutter. So I've been coding almost every day in Flutter. And well, for work, I, I basically have a, an app, a web app done with, um, with Express, React, and SQL Server. So yeah, every day I do JavaScript, Flutter, and for school C. So those are my three languages that I'm almost doing every day. So um, Talking about what I was doing, um, these are my goals, my personal goals of what I want to learn this 2020, which is dominate the Flutter full stack. So I want to be able to do what I got, what what I told you guys I wanted to do, which is having the web app and having the mobile app connected. Uh, TypeScript is being pushed more and more and more um, this year, so I'm seeing more TypeScript in Node and in React. And some people don't like it, but I think it's a really good thing to have uh, TypeScript being pushed because even though it's not truly um, JavaScript, but strong type, at least it gives you the ability to, to designate what type of data you're expecting. So when you declare a variable, uh, like 
say for example var uh, weight equals and for now you leave it null because you don't want to assign it yet but weight that type of thing that's a double so you can uh, assign your variable as null but you're saying this is going to be of type I, I believe in TypeScript is number I don't think they have double but you can put numbers so you know that you know for a fact that you're not expecting an object or an array or a string, you're expect, you are expecting an integer or a double. So I think that's why um, I want to start learning TypeScript more and more. Uh, I want to dominate uh, SQL within my apps. So as I said, at work, I'm using server SQL, uh, which is the Windows SQL um, language that they have. And I'm using it with Express and React, so I want to become better and better so I can start using other uh, apps in production with SQL. Because currently I'm using MongoDB since it's, it's such an ease to use, you know, with the modern stack. <clears throat> uh, learn C and algorithms better. That's something I want to do, especially for my academic um, part of my career. Um, as I told you guys, I'm doing plenty of things at school. Therefore, for me, it's beneficial. That actual course that I showed you guys, I'm actually um, doing it currently. And just out of curiosity, I also want to learn C Sharp uh, Net Core, and I also want to learn uh, Python in the back end and mis machine learning. But these two things, um, I'm not going to try to learn them as much as these um, four things. So, yeah. Um, I don't know what you guys think about um, the, the languages that I told you that are important to look. Um, let me know if you guys like this video. Tell me what you guys uh, think about the programming, programming languages that I talked about. Uh, let me know what you guys are learning for this 2020. And I'll see you later.